Standing on the shore of a mountain lake at sunrise, you may not think you're necessarily on a pilgrimage, but then you're drawn toward a prayerful moment. You gaze into the raspberry and amber skies as the lapping waves try to sing you back to sleep. But you're called to be present and aware in the sense of awe. Or maybe you hike toward an alpine peak when you're serenaded by birdsong, nature's alleluia. Again, you're very present in the moment, thankful and introspective like a pilgrim. And then on the trail, you might literally see Christ on the cross. A traveler, a pilgrim before you, thought to install a wayside chapel, a small wooden structure to draw you even closer toward God. These things are common in Europe and in Wisconsin. Chapels created by European immigrants still pepper the countryside. It is a common European thing, which the, the idea was if you can't go to church every day, well, you could stop here and pray. If you're passing by, well, why not just stop and say a Hail Mary? It was really the faith that was the devotion of the people. I'm Tony Ganser. Today on The Faithful Podcast, we round out our series on the Marian Apparition Site in Champion, Wisconsin, with a few more thoughts on making pilgrimages wherever you are. You don't have to go far to travel deeply in prayer. Sometimes you just need to look closely around you and decide to spiritually get away. That's this time on Faithful. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome any new subscribers and supporters. In our last two episodes, we had a great visit to the only Catholic Church-approved apparition site in the U.S., in Champion, Wisconsin. And in speaking with people for those episodes, we kept hearing this idea that pilgrimages are amazing experiences, but you shouldn't be discouraged if you can't go long distances. A pilgrimage starts in yourself. We heard that from Father Carlos Esparza. But even for those who don't, can't make it to Wisconsin, you, know, you can show that act of devotion, that act of prayer, the act of consent of faith, of inviting Mary to help you, inviting Mary to walk with you, and having her son Jesus walk with you in your own home, in your own neighborhood. People make pilgrimages every day, you know, whether it's just visiting the local churches and their diocese. You're going to Mass there on a different Sunday. Or sometimes people make the walks, you know, if it's a downtown area and they can walk to two or three churches and say a little prayer each church. So there's different ways you can do that pilgrimage. We also heard something similar from Father John Broussard, the rector of the Champion Shrine. Really what it is, is it's an external representation of what should be internal realities. So if I am uh, feeling that call from Christ to go closer to him, stepping out and actually walking to a church or in some form of a pilgrimage is an external manifestation of that. But it really should reflect what's going on interiorly. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. You know, if just, just taking the time to go to church, to your parish, to, uh, to, to make that, um, that effort, that external effort of uh, expressing your love for God and your desire to, to know him more intimately, uh, that that would be that would be wonderful. I've really been trying to keep my eyes open for opportunities to turn everyday moments into mini pilgrimages, you might say. Sometimes I'll go for a run and I'll notice statues of the Virgin Mary in people's gardens, and I might see four or five statues on a run. And if I say a Hail Mary at each, then I've prayed half a decade of a rosary. You might remember our episode about the incorrupt heart of St. Jean Vianney visiting Ohio and how so many faithful Catholics chose to pile into church on a Tuesday to pray together and see this relic. Father Stephen Dominic Hayes in that episode said, There was something about prayerful acts that engage all of our senses— you know, in, in one sense, you know, when you when you come to a relic like this, it, it may seem that it hasn't mattered to you before 
it, before you actually experience it. But it does change you. But all of a sudden, you have a new memory in the mind. All of a sudden, you, you have a new sensory experience of vision or touch. And this enriches, uh, enriches and deepens and strengthens our own spiritual life in terms of commitment and purpose. And in a, in a kind of way, all those things that are part of the life of the church, and the relics are part of it, but pilgrimages and holy water and one's experience of religious services and devotions, you know, there's layer and layer of depth that comes as we throw ourselves into a life with God in this particular way that engages the whole person. You know, Christianity is not an ideology, it is a relationship with the living Lord, and that is done through on all those levels that make us human. We have so many distractions around us. We have fancy gizmos to connect us to music and games and people from all over the world. We have media sources shouting truths and not so truths at us all the time about anything and everything. But we also have unique places to help recenter ourselves. This brings us back to the idea of wayside chapels or roadside chapels. In Wisconsin, literally down the road from the Champion Apparition site, you begin to find tiny chapels. And they're being documented by Father Edward Looney. Well, I'm the pastor of a parish in Brussels, Wisconsin. So you could imagine that the name Brussels <laughs> correlates to Brussels, Belgium. You would think, a yeah. In <laughs> fact, a another neighboring village next to me is called Namur, which is another city in Belgium. So the area I serve as a priest is actually the largest Belgian immigrant settled area. Like, there's more Belgians in this area in the United States any than anywhere else or something like that. So the roadside chapels, are kind of this European devotion. And in fact, here in Wisconsin, there's a few Polish um, customs of little shrines or wayside shrines along the way. For example, if you go to Pulaski, Wisconsin, there's about three of them. If you go to Stevens Point, uh, there's more of them there. And notably, John Paul II said mass somewhere uh, in Stevens Point because it's a large Polish population. Uh, in that area. So um, there are these little Polish shrines and I want to go visit them. I haven't done that. I want to kind of document them as well. Anyways, um, yeah, so it is a common European thing, which the, the idea was if you can't go to church every day, well, you could stop here and pray. If you're passing by, well, why not just stop and say a Hail Mary? It was really the faith that was the devotion of the people. And uh, some of these roadside chapels here in northeastern Wisconsin, they're, so, some of them are to the popular saints. You know, you got St. Peregrine. That's very popular. Everyone knows somebody with cancer. And that, that's at one of my churches. And so we actually put candles in there so people could light a candle. And, and they love that. So, um uh, then there are other chapels, of course, to the Blessed Mother or the Sacred Heart or St. Jude, St. Anthony, th these popular saints. But then you get these obscure saints, like St. Gislain, who is a Belgian bishop that nobody knows about, that his Wikipedia page doesn't say much about him. <laughs> but what there is, is there is a Gislain village, uh, like St. Gislain, that's the name of a municipality wow. in Belgium. Hmm. But apparently a bishop and... He's invoked for children who, with convulsions or something wow, like that. Okay. So, so you have these roadside chapels to obscure saints. Well, what's another one? Let me let me just think sure. of one. Now. Yeah. Well, Saint Rock. He was really unknown up until uh, March 2020. Saint Rock is the saint that's been invoked during the time of pandemic, and especially in pandemics and plagues in the past. Uh, the litany of St. Rock, for example, says that he was invoked by the Council of Florence or whatever council it was, but that a council invoked his intercession during the time of a pandemic. Wow. You learn about these saints as you visit them, as you research who they are, and you learn about them. Anyways, they're just interesting little stories, but these families kind of informed by their life uh, from Belgium or their family heritage, for whatever reason, started putting these chapels up. And 
some of them have very interesting stories. Some of them were like in gratitude for a grace received. Yeah. There's this one chapel, and it's actually not far from the Champion Shrine. Um, it's called the Pirlo Chapel. I don't know if I say that last name right, but um, there's a little sign in there that says, this chapel was built because so-and-so was drowning. He fell through the ice on the water uh, during winter, and as he was drowning, he said, Blessed Mother, if you save me, I will build a tr I will build a chapel in your honor. Wow! And so he lives. Wow! And so now we have a chapel yeah. <laughs> on that property. They're they're cute little chapels. Yeah. They're small. Uh, uh, hopefully, and I've worked with a few people because the theology of their chapel wasn't what I thought was right. Let's say there's a roadside chapel to St. Robert Bellarmine. Okay. Well, you would expect to have a picture of St. Robert Bellarmine or a statue of St. Robert Bellarmine. And so there's been a few chapels that I've had to help people say, I think we should put this statue here. We should, you know, kind of maybe modify this chapel a little bit. But you'll see the patron saint there. And then there's cute little statues, you know, some of them are, are chintzy okay you know? i understand they're, they're, okay you know they're, they're yeah. cute little statues but but and i think some people lose the sense of what they are and gotcha. so they, but but yeah there are people that are still building them to this day this isn't something you know the earliest roadside chapel here in the in northeastern wisconsin probably is the one in the 1870s mm -hmm. it's still there built out of stone uh another one right after that so these are the older chapels that we have so but there have been chapels built throughout the last throughout the last century, and now, in this you know in this new millennium, there there was one that I just blessed the other day that the individual because she was taken to these chapels as a young person always wanted to have a roadside chapel. She had this diagnosis of liver cancer, and so she's like, I guess it's time to build our chapel if I'm going to see it, mm -hmm. and uh, so she. Uh, builds this chapel and somehow miraculously I've never known anyone to ever come back from liver cancer but she's cancer free they say so so you wonder like was it because she built this chapel and because of all the people now that are gonna come to this chapel did God give this grace because of that reason mm -hmm. so Another person I know wants to build a chapel because they're grateful for the healthy delivery of all their grandchildren. So they, they went on a pilgrimage with me to the Holy Land and they want to build a chapel to the visitation. So they were very moved by that shrine in the Holy Land. So they're, the people want to continue their heritage. And it's a very, yeah, it is very interesting that they want to continue it. They, and you know what? For some of these people, there was one chapel that was built and it was built for a, a man that was in the seminary, ended up becoming a priest, Father Edward Lemieux. But his family built him a roadside chapel so that when he would come home from the seminary, he would have a place to pray. Mm -hmm. And I know people that use their roadside chapels as a place of prayer. That, that uh, there was an older gentleman, he's since passed, but he had a roadside chapel in his yard and he would go in there every day and he'd pray his 15 prayers of St. Bridget or whatever he prayed, you know, and he just, that was where he prayed his rosary. So uh, they are places of devotion and they are used by the homeowners, but they're also advertised. So I run the Belgian roadside chat. I, I started the Belgian roadside chapel page on, on Facebook uh, and I share about all the different roadside chapels and everything and post pictures or videos or whatever. And uh, so people go there. They, they, where, where they are, they're in a very touristy area, and so people might choose. There's, there's about 34 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. Hmm. And so they, they might go to one or two of them. They want to stop and see yeah. and learn what this is all about. And hopefully pray. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the thoughts uh, that uh, Father Carlos uh, gave me, he was the uh, priest who originally told me about Champion. Um, he said that uh, when talking about pilgrimage, so often we think we have to go far away. And here we have in Wisconsin um, the Champion Shrine, which is more or less in our backyard in the United States, or as I said to him, our back dairy farm, right? Um, 
Uh, it's a five hundred dollar plane ticket away. Right, <laughs> right, or or a drive, you know, a full day's drive, depending on where you are. Um, but one of the things he told me was, you can make a pilgrimage out of anything, really. Mm. You can walk to different parishes where you are and and make it a point to pray. And I was reminded of that as you were talking about these roadside chapels that really this could be a pilgrimage that you decide on a day you are going to yeah say a rosary at five different chapels and that's going to be your pilgrimage to try to recommit yourself mm. to the faith um and i wonder what what a good that would be if people started you know thinking about pilgrimages in that way to to dedicate themselves to prayer in, in a very yeah intentional manner yeah yeah, there are lots of shrines, and there are obscure shrines as well, you know, like I happen upon some of the most remote shrines in my travels, partly because I like seeing them. Right. So in Briggsville, Wisconsin, by Wisconsin Dells, there is a shrine to St. Philomena, the obscure wonder saint that captured the heart of St. John Vianney. Yeah. And so there's there's saint there's shrines like that um there, there are other major shrines so other titles of mary in addition to um, the apparitions so but you have shrines to different saints like if you go to new orleans i went to the blessed francis xavier silo shrine sure i knew he had a liturgical feast day i didn't know anything about him but i'm in new orleans and i'm like i'll go there yeah. Uh, you, you do that when you go on a little trip. And, and for me as a priest, whenever I travel, uh, I, I look for those places. And I, I'll be going to Iowa soon, and, and uh, I'll be going to a shrine there, but I know that there's this grotto on the way back. And, and so I'm going to stop at that grotto and, and check it out and learn the history behind it and, and be able to share that with other people. So, so yeah, there are, there are actual places, you know, right around us that you could go. But certainly, um, uh, I, I, can't, I can't help but remember the story of John Paul II. He goes to his parish church after his mother dies, goes to the altar of Mary, and says, Mary, you must be a mother to me now. Mm -hmm. And so, well, that for him, that was a mini pilgrimage as he went to offer a prayer to the Blessed Virgin. And in one of my churches, we have a very beautiful statue of Our Lady. And there's this one gentleman who lives, you know, out of state. He literally stops anytime he's in the area because he wants to pray because he's so touched by that statue of the Blessed Mother. So you find those little places. Um, uh, you, the documentary that I'm filming starts with, um, the, the story we start with is driving through kind of the backcountry roads and looking at the houses and seeing they have a statue of Mary in front of their house. Well, you know that they're a Catholic, but it's a reminder. Well, Mary is there. I can ask her to pray for me. I can maybe pray a Hail Mary right now. So, so these little statues, whatever the case might be, are just reminders for us to bow our head, to raise our thoughts to heaven, to ask the intercession of the saints for sure. My thanks again to Father Edward Looney for his help on these episodes and for having me on his podcast as well. Please check out his work. I hope this episode and this series have given you something to consider as you journey forward in your own faith. And I'd like to end with a quote from the brilliant St. Francis de Sales, which might apply to this episode. He says, quote, the pilgrims who spend all of their time counting their steps will make little progress, end quote. It's not about the steps. It's about the direction you're pointing yourself. I'm sure St. Francis would hope that direction is toward God. Thank you for listening, and please have a great day. <laughs>